Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 4. This video we're going to be taking a look at our configuration settings and programming within our Mtune software. This is going to be including things like setting a password, setting our units of measure within our software, among many other basic functionalities and features. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at programming our configuration settings and details within our Max ECU Mtune software. This is going to be some of the most basic things that we have to make sure are right in order to get our engine fired up and running and working properly with our Mtune software. So we're going to be turning our attention right now into the very top portion of our navigation screen under configuration area right here. If we click the plus button, our drop down menu here appears and we're going to be going over all the various tables, features and functions within our section right here in this video. Let's start off with our engine settings. This is going to be some of the basic details to finding the engine that we're working with. So we can find right here our first option here, engine type. This is going to be what we choose based on the engine that we're working with. So a four stroke, a two stroke or a rotary engine. In this case, I'm going to be selecting four stroke because I'm going to be assuming I'm tuning a four stroke four cylinder engine. So I'll select my first option here under piston four stroke. Now the number of cylinders we have to define so it understands how many cylinders it's going to be controlling for fuel injectors and for spark timing and also for the volumetric efficiency modeling. If we have six cylinders versus four cylinders or eight cylinders versus four cylinders, that's going to be quite a difference in the fuel delivery and in the airflow interpolate interpretation from our volumetric efficiency table. We're going to be getting into what this represents a little bit further once we get into the VE specific video, but we need to go and specify the number of cylinders. In this case, I'm going to assume again, I have a four cylinder, four stroke engine. Now the engine displacement here, this is where we need to enter in the displacement for the engine we're working with. So depending if we're used to working in units of CCs or cubic centimeters, or we're working with cubic inches, uh, we're going to be uh, being able to go and enter either right here. I'm going to assume I have a 2.4 liter engine. Now in liters to CCs, we simply multiply by a factor of um, a 1000. In this case, it would be 2400 in order to get the CCs from liters. So I'm gonna go and type in here 2400 and then do uh, enter. Now, if we do have and do know our cubic inches, we'll have to enter that in right here. So when you're dealing with a domestic application, so a Ford or a GM or a Dodge, we typically reference things in cubic inches. If you have a LS7 engine, that's going to be here, a 427 cubic inch, and we click OK here, that's going to give us the engine displacement here of approximately 7,000 uh, 7, cc or roughly a 7 liter, which would be an LS7 um, if we're going to be referencing again a domestic application. So this allows you to convert your cubic inches into cc's. If we click OK, it would transfer that data right here, but in this case, I'm going to click Cancel. I don't want to go and update that. I'm assuming I'm running a 2400 cc or 2.4 liter four cylinder four stroke engine. Now the next parameter here, max crank RPM, this is going to be telling the, uh, the max ECU when it can consider the conditions from a cranking condition into an engine run condition, essentially trans translating it from our cranking fuel tables or cranking spark timing values into um, the after start tables or the main fuel table and main spark timing table. It needs to know this transition or switch point because it is going to matter when the engine's firing off, especially cold definitely matters because the amount of fuel we have to deliver on a cold engine is substantial compared to a warm engine. But either way, we need to specify this. Now, most engines will have a value of here, three to 350 for the, uh, the point where we enter in the max crank RPM. So above this point, it's gonna consider the engine to be running. Below this point, so 300 RPMs and below, it'll consider it to be in the cranking conditions using the cranking fuel and spark timing values sourced from our areas here under fuel and ignition. Again, we're gonna have a separate video on that and cover that in, in, in a lot more detail, but this is going to be what uh, is going to be tied into that and, and, and designating between cranking mode or fired and running mode. Next thing we need to enter here is the firing order of the engine we're working with. So engine fire order one, this is going to be um, with the first cylinder in our firing order is going to be second, third, and fourth. Now in this case, most four cylinder engines are going to be a one, three, four, two firing order. So in this case, I'm just going to enter that in. It's actually pre-populated already. You don't have to change anything. Now, if you have a V8 engine, there's going to be all kinds of different firing orders you might have to work with. An inline six cylinder engine, um, RB to a 2J, they're going to have different firing orders. So you have to go and enter that in here based on the engine you're working with. Pretty simple. The next option here is going to be our fire firing angle calculation. This is going to be allowing us to just do assume we have an even fired engine or 
If we have an odd fired engine where it doesn't line up perfectly of uh, where the engine is going to be in relation to the crankshaft travel um, for the, the piston moving up in the bore of where it's going to be firing off, an odd fire engine is another option here. Now, odd fire engines aren't going to be very common. However, we can account for an odd fire engine in, into the uh, software here. So most engines are going to be an auto even fire. So we would have that option. So a 2J, an RB, uh, even LS engines, uh, most Ford engines are all going to be um, a normal even fire. Most Honda engines, most Japanese engines are going to be even fire. But in the event that we do have an odd fire engine, we'll have to go into manual TDC angles and enter in what the TDC angle is going to be. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.